Oh boy, that doesn't look good. Man, that's too many shavings for the bike with a 50 hours. Something's not right. I finally know what caused metal shavings in my KTM engine and today I'm gonna show you seven things you need to check if you have a similar problem. So this is the bad boy oil gear, duck a little groove around. I've seen worse. If How much this thing actually moves? This is shaved off, came off, some discoloration from the heat. Here's my task puller. It will not make any more grooves. I'm gonna zoom in and show you the nut. Not actually wrap a big hole. It spins and engages. There is a lot of wear marks. It's nice, shiny, smooth. Something is rubbing somewhere. Hey, what's up guys? Rado here. Hey, this video I'm super happy because I finally found what it is and I can share it with you guys. And I did a lot of research. I did a lot of homework. You guys don't need to do. Just follow the steps I show you in the video, the seven things I checked and I finally found what was my problem. A quick disclaimer, you don't have to take everything off the bike like I did here. I'm gonna do a build on this thing. That's why everything is off. But today we're talking only about the engines. So this is 2023 KTM 250. I bought it with like 45 hours. After my first uh, oil change or second oil change, I started seeing some uh, aluminum shavings in my, uh, on my filter, on my screen. So I started digging into it. All right, so first things first, make sure that your shavings are really aluminum. So take your magnet, go to your shavings and just make sure that they are not sticking to your magnet. So first thing would be to check your clutch stack and that's what I did in the last video and I thought that was my problem because the clutch didn't look good. As you can see it has uh, some discoloration from the heat and one thing that is uh, also noticeable, these ears look both sides here. This is shaved off. It was supposed to be as big as this little piece here. So this much of a plate is gone on both sides here. So I put the brand new clutch stack in and the bike ran amazing and it looked good for a few hours. I didn't see any more shavings. But then after like six hours, my second oil change, I started seeing the same thing again. So the clutch stack wasn't my problem and I had to dig a little bit deeper. Now the second thing that everybody should check and it's very important, it happened quite often, is the primary drive uh, nut 24 millimeter that sometimes comes loose and will wrap on the inner case. Now, if you wanna work on it, you have to remove the big clutch cover off and then you can uh, work on that nut. But just to inspect it visually, you are able to do it at the same time as you are working on your clutch. All right, so the clutch stick is out. I'm gonna zoom in and show you the nut. Now we can see the nut is right here. That's the thing, it's a primary nut, 24 millimeter opposite thread, remember that. And in my case, it's sitting tightly against the sprocket as it should. And there is actually a gap, if I look from the top, between the case and the nut, there is a gap. So mine is not rubbing, mine is fine. But yes, this is a thing that will happen many times on many bikes. That thing will come loose, start rubbing on that inner case and will create a big damage if you don't catch it on time. So if this is your problem, remember 150 Newton meters, opposite tread and a red tread locker and you should be golden. Again, catch this thing before it happens. Don't wait for four oil changes. I'm gonna show you a picture. This guy was waiting for four oil changes and that nut actually wrapped a big hole in his case. So he had to buy all new case uh, for his KTM. So if you see the shavings, take the clutch out and look into that nut uh, right away. Make sure that that's what it is. But that wasn't my case, so I had to keep digging. Now the third thing would be to go on the other side of the engine, remove the ignition cover and go underneath the, the flywheel and look at your gear for the you know, starter gear for your one-way clutch and if anything is rubbing there. Here's my task puller I ordered on Rocky Mountain ATV. Okay, I can put the link below in the description. It was like 20 bucks. There you go, flywheel comes off. All right, so you wanna look underneath and make sure everything is, I can see a little bit of rubbing, but that's not a big deal. You can remove this uh, gear right here. Take this screw out. 
and then you can slide out this bad boy. Now you can look underneath. Uh, if this shifted for some reason, uh, you would have a lot of uh, metal shaving coming from here, which I don't have, but you know, it's good. Now you look at everything. Nothing is touching here. There are no shavings coming from any of these pieces. So you have peace of mind. And while I'm at it, I'm looking at this gear right here and uh, it should be nice and shiny. Mine is not. It's uh, sometimes getting this clunky noise and this is your one-way clutch, these little teeth, uh, little rollers. So this goes inside. So it should spin one way and then engage the other way. Spins and engages. So if this is not 100% uh, right, sometimes it will clank and it will, it will, your starter will stop so you have to re-engage the button again. I had that happening as I said, so I will be getting a new one replacement, both of these things. You can replace this inner piece and uh, I'm gonna get this gear, you know, just to be safe. I don't need to take this apart uh, anymore and my starter will be like new. I've seen worse. If I check some pictures online, I definitely seen worse, but mine start having some wear on them. As you can see, they're not, they're not shiny all the way. You can see some wear marks like right there on this one. So if you go around, it, it's not perfect. This one also has a pretty big uh, mark right there. All right, so this is my old one that has all these marks. And here is a brand new one. As you can see, it's nice, shiny, smooth. There are no wear marks on it. So this is all it takes to have these little intermittent issues with your starter. So this thing is now brand new. And also the one-way clutch, those rollers are brand new as well. So our starter will be 100%. All right, we checked three things and we still don't have problem for my bike. So thing number four would be other side of the engine. We now have to remove the big clutch cover. And for 2023 and newer bikes, unfortunately, KTM changed the design of a frame and you cannot remove that clutch cover with the engine in the frame. On everything prior to 2023, you can do it. Just remove the bolts and remove your big clutch cover. But on these bikes and newer, you cannot do it. So I had to take my engine out, put it on a bench and work on the bench. So the first thing we will be checking, the thing number four would be the aluminum uh, shift star that sometimes can come loose. There is a bolt on it, can come loose and maybe shift a little bit and can be rubbing on some of the gears, the oil pump gear or something else. So you have to look at it again, visually, you know, look from many different angles, see if you can, uh, find something abnormal if there is something that can cause all these uh, shavings. In my case, everything looked beautiful, everything looked good, everything was where it's supposed to be, and I haven't seen anything uh, disturbing there. Thing number five to check, it's something that probably happened on every single KTM engine. It's a little funny design, I don't know why is it like that, but it's completely normal, even though it looks a little bit off. So there is a small oil gear on the oil pump that uh, can wrap on the aluminum plate that is underneath. It, it's kind of floating in the, on the shaft and it needs to find its happy space. So when you get brand new bike, that uh, the bottom, there are the two doohickeys on that uh, sprocket, that bottom can rub on your, on your uh, plate that is underneath and can create a groove. But if that groove is not too extensive, if that groove is not too deep, don't worry about it, it's normal. It happens on every single engine. Maybe you can see a little bit of shavings in your oil change. So just monitor it, check your oil uh, you know, frequently, pull out that, uh, that screen, check it. If it's uh, not getting worse or if it's going away, then you should be okay. These little things uh, are just touching the plate a little bit. It's uh, supposed to float on that shaft, but then it might touch the plate a little bit as it spins. And it will find its happy place uh, after, I don't know, a few oil changes and it will not make any more grooves. If you look how, uh, how much they are sticking out and how deep my, uh, my groove, it's uh, not even comparable. So now I know that this thing is actually sitting where it's supposed to sit. Uh, yeah, it did a little bit of shavings, but it's not a big deal. So we can put it back together and we should be okay. Now we check five things and we still don't know what's problem with my engine. So next thing uh, I was thinking could cause it is, uh, you know, when I start the engine, uh, the chain will slab all over the place, the timing chain. So I thought that uh, maybe that's rubbing somewhere, hitting somewhere. And as I'm starting from those first like five seconds of engine running, maybe I create some shavings and every time I start it, it will just accumulate. So I look at everything there and I, I put a new 
chain tensioner in, you know, just to be sure, because I didn't like that uh, five second of uh, clanking noise uh, on my chain. I found something a little bit disturbing that I thought might be a raw aluminum that the chain was rubbing on it. But after further research, I found out that that's normal. That's uh, nothing to worry about. So my chain wasn't a, wasn't a reason, wasn't a problem. But if your tensioner is not working uh, or is working uh, improperly, then the chain may be slapping and you hear a lot of noise. Don't ride your bike like that. You need new tensioner. So keep eye on it. Uh, if it's too extensive, yeah, you can probably create some metal shavings. But in my case, that, that wasn't it, uh, but still I put a new tensioner in. So we already checked six things and we still don't know what's wrong with this KTM. Now in order to find out what's wrong, <laughs> interestingly, we have to go back to step one. Yes, my problem was in clutch and uh, I didn't have to do all these things, but it's good I did it. It's good I did all the homework because now I can share with you guys and you can check your KTM or Husky or guess guess. So, uh, my problem was in the clutch and specifically in the clutch pressure plate that was uh, creating some problem there and we're gonna look at it in details and I'll tell you why this thing happened, most likely. All right, so this is the reason for my shavings in the engine. This is the old uh, pressure plate with a spacer and this one is new. And I wanna show you, this is all it takes to cause all these troubles in your engine. So you can see there is a my, my nail will catch on this groove. So this washer dug a little groove around that's not supposed to be there. Like all these things, I can, I can catch my nail on them. So it's much deeper and now it keeps just, uh, you know, digging deeper and deeper and getting more and more aluminum out. So when I took this apart, finally, and I took this spacer out, there was a lot of uh, metal shavings st stuck to it uh, all the way around. So I, I cleaned this and it was on my finger. So that's why I'm 100% sure this is my reason. And also comparing to this one, now when I take the new one out, my nail is not catching on anything. There is like no groove. I mean, you see that it's supposed to sit there, that's all fine, but there is no groove. Over here is much deeper. So if I just keep it like that, it will dig deeper and deeper and I will keep having those shavings. Now the reason why this happened is because this thing right here has actually only one way it should be installed. It has a little letters and it says top right here. It says T-O-P top. So it should go like that because it's flat from one side and then it's a little bit beveled from the other side. So if you put it like that, not knowing that you put it upside down, then we'll start digging into it and you know, cutting it. Now, the second thing is, even if you put it in correctly, but then you install your, your spring, and then you install it a little bit offset, then you will put too much pressure on one side and it will be not, you know, equally spread uh, across the whole thing. And then you can start digging in it as well. So make sure when you're installing this thing, when you put uh, this on the top, you have to center it. Make sure that it's centered and then you go and tighten two bolts, make sure that this whole spring is in the middle. All right, so we're putting everything back together. I wanna to show you how much this thing actually moves so you can make it off center very easily. So when you put this back together, make sure that it is all centered when you tighten all these bolts. All right guys, so these are the seven things you need to check if you see aluminum shavings in your engine while you are doing the oil change every four hours like you should. As you saw, none of these things is really a big deal. If you have problem in any of these seven areas, to fix them wouldn't cost you a lot of money. You just need to find out what it is. In my case, the pressure plate is $28. The, the washer is $10. So it would cost me $38 plus some shipping and tax. So let's say 50, 60 bucks, and uh, I will be okay. I can put this whole thing together and I'm not gonna have any more uh, aluminum shavings in my engine. Now in my case, I spent a little bit more money because I'm building this thing and I want it to be 100%, so I bought some other parts as well. But to fix the problem, $50 would be enough. So don't be scared to open your engine and look at everything. Uh, you have this guide, seven things, check them for sure. I, I am pretty sure that one of those things would be causing the problem. If you do find something else on your engine, please comment below uh, this video and let us know what it was. So then, you know, guys, watching this video, trying to solve their problem on a KTM can find what they need uh, on this video and in the comments. All right, my friends, 
Hopefully you find this helpful. Hopefully this uh, whole thing uh, will help you to find out problem on your KTM and uh, you can get back on the track, keep riding and having fun. And don't forget my friends, whatever you do, stay motivated. See you guys later.